Our pleasure. Uh, so for members of the public following along, uh, item number four has been deferred at the request of the applicant. So that brings us to item number five, rezoning application 00537 for 1010 Cook Street. I'll welcome our planning staff back to the table. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Mayor Helps and Council. Uh, my name is Mike Angrobe, and today I'll be presenting a rezoning application for 1010 Cook Street to permit the use of storefront cannabis retailer. Uh, moving through the context slide, the property is located on Cook Street, just south of Fort Street, and in between Mears and Rockland. Uh, the slide shows a view looking at the front of the property from Cook Street. There is an existing storefront cannabis retailer on the property that was in operation prior to July 28th, 2016. A view of the neighboring property to the north that sells bicycles and repairs bicy bicycles. And the adjacent property to the south with residential uses. The apartment building's parking lot provides separation from the subject property. The OCP designates the property within the core residential or in place designation within which commercial is an envisioned use. And finally, this slide displays that while Gulf Island Organics is within 200 meters of the subject property, it has not applied for a rezoning and therefore is not a permitted storefront cannabis retailer at this time. There are no schools within 200 meters of 1010 Cook Street. The proposal therefore complies with relevant policies and staff recommend that council consider supporting this application. Thank you and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Council, are there any questions? Yes, Councillor Alto. Uh, just to clarify, my only one question was with regard to uh, the Gulf Islands dispensary, the little red dot. So just so that I understand, should this be, should the application before us be approved, that application, should it come forward, would have to be declined. Is that correct? Uh, potentially, there is some wording in the policy that would allow for council's discretion uh, for a reduced distance with the 200 meter rule. Mr. Tinney? The, the policy is just that, a policy. It's guiding policy for Council and, and uh, doesn't necessarily fetter Council's decision making. I think from staff's perspective, uh, the recommendation would be to decline based on the terms of the policy, but that doesn't, uh, that doesn't fetter Council's ability to approve uh, an override council or, um, staff's recommendation. Right. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Councillor Lucas. Thank you. I, I just had a question about signage for um, like it's it's not terribly attractive when you look at the picture. Are they? Do we have special uh, rules around signage? Do we um, encourage or discourage? I don't Mr. Know. Coates, uh, through the mayor, the signage regulations apply to being visible from to the public from the street. So. Um, off-site signage, for example, is not permitted, and, and really displaying uh, signage in general is, it, it's very sort of innocuous. Okay, but I think, can we put the picture back up? That I think the point Councillor Lucas is making is that might not be the case. So does this comply with the sign bylaw, Mr. Coates? Or not the sign bylaw, but the regulations for dispensaries? Through my helps, in order for the... Uh, for the whole, for the business license uh, to be issued, they they would have to be in complete compliance. Um, I, I can do a quick check on this one property and and let council know if if that sign is is determined to be in compliance. I don't have that information right now, but I can get it. Thank you. If we should forward this to public hearing, could we have a short report accompanying the public hearing report? Thank you, Councillor Lucas. Anything further? Yeah, go ahead. I, I also had a question about um, uh, our by law or by our policy, um, would they be able to put product in the front window? I can't remember the rule on that. Mr. Coates? Through my helps, um, the short answer is yes, uh, but the stipulations on, on what's displayed in the window is A, the windows have to be free and unobstructed, uh, first and foremost, and so products can be displayed in the, the window. It's advertising that's generally not able to be displayed, and so um, talking that through, I think that the signage here is probably not compliant, but again, I'd just like to confirm that. Thank you. Any further questions? Okay, seeing no questions, Mr. Coates, if you could bring the recommendation. And Council, I'll ask if there's anyone who wishes to put the staff recommendation on the table. Okay, thank you. Councillor Loveday, is there a seconder? 
Thanks. Seconded by Councillor Isaac. Discussion? I'll go to the so mover. Have a and question. Yes, go ahead. Um, and this is uh, back to the, the sign signage requirements in our policy. <clears throat> so no off-site signage. Did we, do we have any considerations within there if there's, say, a chain of these stores and they have uh, off-site signage? It doesn't necessarily say the location, but it advertises for the chain and they might have multiple locations. For example, a billboard. You mean like a billboard on the Pat Bay Highway, for example? Through my help, so our regulations apply within the city limits, um, right. first and foremost. Thank you. Anything further, Councillor Loveday? Okay, I've got Councillor Thornton Joe and then Councillor Isaac. Oh, actually, sorry, Councillor Isaac seconded. I'll go to the seconder and then I'll go to Councillor Thornton Joe. Go ahead, Councillor sure. Isaac. So, can staff just clarify the advertising that's happened to date in terms of um, is there signage on site in terms of this application coming forward? Uh, yes, there is. Okay. Um, and I've been looking, I, I've been somewhat surprised by the lack of public input to date compared to input we've received on other applications. Do staff have any idea why that's the case? Mr. Tinney? Uh, to some extent, because this is a slightly different rezoning process. So if you, if council will recall, the uh, Community Association Land Use Committee's uh, deferred uh, referral of these uh, or, or the requirement for a community meeting. So typically in a rezoning application, council would see a, uh, a set of um, notes from a community meeting mm -hmm. um, as well there there is a mail out that goes out uh, 100 meters uh, from the property as part of that community meeting um, with the meeting not occurring that mail out is, has not occurred that said there will be the, the notification of the public hearing that will go out to that that notification area prior to the public hearing so given that these are relatively straightforward in the sense of a, a straight use question for council in most cases um, the the process in this case really puts the emphasis for community feedback on the public hearing Sure. Okay, I look forward to hearing from the public on their views on this application. So that's why I support the motion going forward. Thank you, Councillor Thornton-Joe. Just a question on of the pictures. Um, if you go back to the pictures of the window of the application. And just a question, just uh, because we're talking about signage. When you blow that up, is is that a piece of wood covering a broken window on the far right hand side? Do we know? And if was that pictured? I don't know who took the photo. Whether it's staff that took the photo, and whether that's been repaired. If that's what that is, uh, it appears to be. Um, I don't know if it's been repaired or not. Though. Okay, would be so they'll go by. Oh, okay. Uh, um, I'm willing um, to send it to public hearing, but I'm just. You know, although signage is really important, I think it's how you uh, keep, when I'm making decisions, it's how you're caring for your building and, and the frontage of your building. And so that stood out to me. So um, I'll be reserving my final decision at that time. Thank you. Any further speakers? Yes, Councillor Young. Um, yeah, I'm not able to support this. I've uh, not particularly with regard to this site, but... Uh, I'm I'm really becoming um, I think I'm not not able to support our our general uh, policy. Councillor Thornton Joe just alluded to the the issue of the maintenance of the building and considering that in the decision. But in fact, the council policy as it exists now is very much a first come first served policy. And under our policy, if we approve this one. The other one that's inside the circle basically doesn't get recommended to us by our staff. There's no competition to see which of them is better. Um, we were told that um, it's basically the, the first come, first served policy depends on the speed with which it goes through the, the process. So. I assume that if applications are incomplete or if there's some element of it that that is not correct, um, that feedback goes back to the applicant and I assume they adjust it. But I, I can see real difficulties with um, the 
the policy that Council has adopted with regard to uh, this 200-meter uh, uh, zone, uh, exclusivity zone, and um, the, uh, the way in which that is translated into our zoning decisions. Uh, I'm also, more fundamentally, I don't think that that the that the bylaws that we have, that is the 200 meter exclusive selling zone, uh, not being near schools and so forth, um, are really addressing uh, a lot of the important issues that any regulation is going to have to um, address. We've become, even since we adopted the policy, we've become uh, very much aware of the issue of um, the quality of the products that are being sold and whether they're contaminated uh, or not, for example, as well as um, um, issues connected with health impacts of consumption, which um, I guess we'll be dealing with for a, a long time to come. But certainly the, the issue of product quality is one that I think people would expect us to be dealing with uh, um, in as much as when we give our stamp of approval to these, uh, to these uh, operations. Um, and of course, that's not something we were proposing to do. We are not proposing to set up an inspection department with a laboratory or contract with a laboratory and go around and demand samples and have them tested in order to allow operations to continue. We have regulations about the windows being not having blinds on them and so forth, but that's not addressing the 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 fundamental issue that I think that people are going to expect to be addressed. Now, those issues are going to be addressed, we assume, when the federal government uh, comes out with regulations. Um, the whole issue of um, the pricing and taxation of medical versus recreational use products is going to be addressed. Uh, I suspect that uh, profit margins in this um, business are going to fall precipitously and the number of stores will uh, will uh, decline enormously. Um, and um, a lot of the issues connected with over, um, overabundance of stores will, uh, will fall away in any case. So I, um, I, in some senses, I think we're doing too much in terms of the zoning. Um, in some senses, we're not doing enough because we are uh, in the process of a approving and licensing operations, which uh, may not, in fact, be selling safe products. And um, I, I think that, frankly, this uh, whole area needs to be um, left in the hands of the, um, uh, the courts and the law enforcement processes to decide how uh, this, um, how this business is regulated during this interim period of, of uh, expected um, legalization. Thank you. Other speakers? Okay. Uh, I agree with everything Councillor Young said and look forward to the federal government telling us what to do in all of these matters. Uh, in the meantime, I do support this very specific proposal uh, going forward to public hearing. Um, <clears throat> to hear from the public, I will look forward to Mr. Coates' report, and I will not, uh, for the applicant who I think is here, support a rezoning for any property that is not complying with our business license to a T. So I don't know whether you are or aren't, but um, we'll get that report from Mr. Coates uh, and for any other dispensary owners who will listen to this or listening to this in the future. Um, you must, in my opinion, comply with our business license bylaw, our signage bylaw, all of the things that we've uh, requested of you by the time you get to rezoning. Otherwise, I am not going to look favorably uh, on the application. Mr. Coates? Thank you, Mr. Helps. Just for clarification for Council, so the signage requirements are that there's two signs allowed and that they're alpha and numeric display only, so there's no sort of um, product information and that sort of thing. So it's a very basic business name and, and that sort of thing. So it's very very specified uh, general information that's available on signage. And again, we can uh, make confirmation for Council whether or not this and all the other applications coming forward are, are 
compliant or not with all of the provisions. Great, yeah, and that would be good so as not to waste anyone's time. If we could have uh, as a um, supplement to the planning staff's committee of the whole reports on these applications, a uh, note from our legislative services department as to whether um, the business is, if they are in operation, is compliant with the business license, uh, all of the regulations we've set out. Can we do that? Great, so going forward. Thank you. Thanks, staff. Uh, all those in favour? Any opposed? One opposed. Okay, thank you. That will go forward to public hearing. Uh, again, for people following along, uh, items 6 and 7 were uh, put on the consent agenda this morning, so they will not be discussed today, but rather at our committee or council meeting uh, next Thursday, March 23rd, which takes us to item number 8, uh, development variance permit uh, and 